systems are the key, more or less, to how we understand numbers, how we use numbers, and we'll use this quite a bit throughout this course and throughout your career. You'll especially run into a few different number systems. Um, so the one, the two ones you probably can know about or guess, everyone knows decimal, so that's just what we always use every day, 1 to 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, et cetera. Um, binary is just using, as I said before, ones and zeros. Um, so it represents the same information. So you can write numbers in different ways. So um, using decimal, for example, we would write the number 3. And this is equivalent in binary, um, for example, to 1-1. One, one. Um, and why this comes about is that the decimal number system, decimal just means there's basically 10, um, place 10 values for each unit. So if you write the number 197, for example, um, each of these places represents something. So this represents uh, 7. And you can only go up to 9 and then you're out of it. There's no made up value for what 10 is. Um, in decimal, there's only two options. I mean in binary, sorry, as I said, there's only two options. There's 1 or 0. Um, so when we have 3, we can't write it, obviously, as 3 because it just doesn't exist in the binary world. They've never heard of it. Um, so you have to convert everything to just using 0 and 1. Um, so I'll just sort of jump right into a example conversion because I think it's somewhat the easiest way to see how this works. So in decimal, um, each, of the, each of these has a certain value. So this, for example, we could say this 7 represents 7. This 9, though, doesn't just represent 9. Uh, this 9 really represents 90, because if you had 9-7, you would say 97. Um, likewise, the 1 doesn't just represent a 1. Uh, it really represents 100, because we have 197. Uh, if you had another value further over, uh, you would have in the thousands, for example. So if you want another way to think of it, you could say, well, we could draw out placeholders, um, and we could say if you have a decimal number, uh, it's just equal to you know that number. This spot here is really equal to 10 times whatever you've written. This spot is equal to uh, 100 times, and this spot is equal to 1,000 times. Uh, so if you were given a decimal number and you want to break it down, you know, we have 2,971. So 2 times 1,000, 2,000, again, 900. This is 70. And this is 1. So this is exactly how we're going to break it down in the binary system. But instead of being times 1, times 10, times 100, times 1,000, because this is, this is decimal, um, and where these actually come from is times 1 is 10 to the power of 0. Um, times 10 is 10 to the power of 1. This is 10 to the power of 2. Um, and this is 10 to the power of 3. So what you can kind of guess from this, or infer, is that um, the 10 is the base. So this is a base 10 system, decimal. And the 0 is sort of the location of that number. So when we deal with binary, um, what we'll have instead of times 10 is this one will be, for example, worth 2 to the power of 0 equals 1. Um, this one will be worth 2 to the power of 1 is equal to 2, and <coughs> so forth. See that? I guess a little. 2 to the power of 3 um, is equal to 8. 
So it, it's the exact same sort of system, though. We'll just say 1 times 1 is equal to 1. 1 times 2 is equal to 2. So to just use this example, if I have this number, and I know it's a binary number, and I want to convert it to decimal, I can say each one of those digits has this mapping. So each one of these digits has a certain value here. Um, so for the first digit, we'll just say, OK, 1 times 1 equals 1. So 1 times 1 equals what we put there. Um, for the second digit, we have a 1 in this value. So you'll say 1 times 2. So if we just move each of the digits into the associated box, um, which has the certain value, we can then say, okay, 1 times 1 equals 1. 2 times 1 equals 2. Uh, 4 times 0 equals 0. 8 times 1 is equal to 8. 16 times 0 is equal to 0. So, you know, it's very advanced multiplication you have to do here. So, really, you can just look at it and say, all right, 128. Um, the decimal number is just the addition of all those. So when we had decimal, um, let me just go back. This value, this 2,971, is just equal to all of these added together. Um, in exactly the same way, the binary number is just the addition of all the individual values. Um, so if I clear the ink here, we can see this number uh, is corresponding to 235 in decimal. Does that make sense to everyone? Um, so as an example, I don't actually have a handout. I'll just say, well, I'll do these after. I'll do, go basically go through a bunch of examples. Uh, so converting the other way around is maybe a little trickier, but there's sort of um, some easier ways to do it. So the way I recommend, there's a way given in the notes, which is, I've got the name for it, but you're using division and stuff. Um, but here's what I'll sort of recommend doing, is that when you have this, ignore this, and say we have... Say we have some number you want to convert into decimal. Um, I think down here I was using 216. So if we have the number 216 you're given and you want the decimal version of it, uh, the easiest way to go about that is to split it down. So you say 216, um, does it fit within 128? And so I'll say, for example, in this here I'm showing you, okay, it does. So you put a 1 in that position. So 216 minus 128 is equal to 88. Um, so you'll put a 1 here, and you'll say 216 minus 128 is equal to 88. Um, and then you'll say, is 88 greater than 64? And the answer is yes, it is. So we'll put a 1 in this position. And then we'll go 88 minus 64. Um, what does that equal? So, And you just keep doing that. Oops, sorry. And you can keep doing this and going through to get each possible position. So eventually what you'll run into is that when you do this subtraction, uh, it won't, it'll give you some number below zero, which will mean you'll get a zero in that position. So if we go back, uh, 24. So this gives us the 24. Um, and I said there was one in that position. So now we have 20, oops, sorry. Erase that. Um, so there's one in that position. So now we have 24. So we have to say, how do we make 24 in binary? So this position is worth, the value of it is 32. 
Um, so the 24, if we were to subtract 24 minus 32, it would give us a negative. So we can't have that. So there's a zero in this position. So then you go to the next position and say 24 um, minus 16. Uh, and that'll give you something that's greater than zero, zero. So there's a one in this position, it's telling you. Um, and when you go through that sort of procedure, you'll end up with the final value in binary. Um, so basically, how you can check this is you can do the reverse. So if you want to check it, you can say 8 plus 16 plus 64 plus 128, um, and that will give you the resulting 216. Uh, so the reverse calculation, once you do it a few times, it, it's a little tiny bit more work, but not that difficult, really. Um, so maybe I'll go through a few examples. Um, so if you have some paper or something, we can just do a few examples of these. So I have the following conversions that you can convert to binary. So let me just copy these somewhere better. You need it.
Um, so for this final one, uh, I'll go through this one. So again, you can just basically map um, each of these to what their value is. So we can say 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0. And you might have noticed they're actually, I haven't given you enough value, so you just keep going. So instead of 2 to the 7, um, you have 2 to the 8, uh, which is equal to double this, which is 256. Um, and the next value, this one, which is 0, is worth 2 to the power 9, uh, which is double of 256, which is 512. Um, so the answer to this one then just becomes 256 plus 64, because that's a 1, plus 8, plus 2, plus 1. Um, and you just use... What is it, sorry? So we can just check, I'll just check the fast right here. Yep, 331, so... Um, again, if you got these, you should have no trouble at all with that part of the assignment. Um, so, then the next thing um, is likewise to convert from decimal to binary. Um, I'm going to go through these in a little more detail first because I didn't... Um, in the lecture. So I'll start with an easy one. All right, I'll start with the bigger one. Um, say to use 345 um, in, to convert from decimal to binary. So we have 345. Uh, so the first thing you need to find is how many positions you're going to need. So for example, you can draw A bunch of them. Um, so as before, we have this position is worth 2 to the 0, which is 1, 2 to the 1, 2, 2 to the 2, 4, um, and it just keeps doubling. So you can simply write down the doubled version. 64, 128, 256, and then 512. And if you want to keep going, um, so when you look at this number, when you have to convert it, you can start with this, having written down all of the values of each position, and you can say, okay, 345, um, the next biggest number that's smaller to, so it's bigger than 256, but smaller than 512. So 512 will have a zero in it because we won't need 512 or 1024, anything higher to make this number. We'll only need smaller numbers. Um, so you can start there, and we can start at 256, and we'll have a 1 in this position, because this is smaller than 345, so 345 minus 256. Um, so how you can sort of think of it is that, effectively, we're trying to make some numbers. So we take off 256 from what we need to make now. I'm just going to use the calculator to speed this up. Um, so that's 89. So now what we're trying to do is make the number 89. Um, so 89 is smaller than 128, so there will be a zero in this position. Um, the next one it'll fit within is 64, so 89... minus 64, um, because what we're going to do is we'll put a 1 in the 64 position, um, and we're basically saying, okay, we're going to take away 64 from that, and that's the new number we need to make. Uh, so this is now 25. Uh, so 25 is smaller than 32. We have no use for 32, so 
kill it by putting a zero there. Um, and 16 is the next number that will fit inside 25. So we will use 16. We put a 1 there, um, subtract it, 9. And you just keep following that procedure. So now we have 9. So 9 is bigger than 8, or, yeah, bigger than 8. So we will use 8. So we'll put a 1 there. Um, I guess I should fill these in. Uh, we'll put a 1 there. 1 is smaller than 4. We cannot use 4 to make 1. Uh, likewise, we cannot use 2 to make 1. So 0 goes there, and 0 goes in the next spot too. Um, and finally, we have 1. 1 minus 1 is 0, and we're done. Um, so in that example, we ended up with a 1 at the end. So you can follow that exact same procedure um, no matter what number you're making. So I'll do one more example where we end up. So say we're making, the objective is to make 192. Uh, where is it? Uh, so this is what you have to convert from decimal to binary. Again, you just follow the exact same procedure. So I'll write out the value here is 1. The value of this position is 2, 4, 8. 16, 32, and again, I'm just doubling it now, so it's even faster, 128, and this one's 256. So this 256 is bigger than 192, um, so we'll put a zero in this position, and we just won't write it. So 192 minus 128 um, we'll put a 1 there because we're subtracting 128 from it. So this results in 64. Um, this is the same, so it's still 0 or greater. So we'll put a 1 there and we'll go 64, subtract 64, and we get a 0. Um, so what this means is that we still need to put zeros in the rest of the places. You need to keep zeros there to ensure you get the correct place value. Um, but we're effectively done, so everything else is zero. Because we're not going to be using those numbers anymore. And so the final value you can write, um, you can drop leading zeros here, so you can just write 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And that's in binary. Um, so that's how you do the conversion the other way. So, there's a joke that people often use. There's one zero kinds of people in the world, those that understand binary and those that don't. So what this is showing is there's multiple ways of interpreting a number. Obviously this in binary means two, um, but in decimal means ten. And if you just have a number written down, you don't know is it 10? Is it 2? What the heck is this? Because is this binary? Um, and binary is equivalent to 2? Or is it decimal? 10? Or is it something else? So we, we're engineers. We don't want this ambiguity. You don't want jokes in your code or anything like that. It's baloney. So we use a lowercase 2, which you probably saw, to indicate the base, or a lowercase number. So, or sometimes you might see a lowercase b for binary. So what I'm saying here is 1, 0, 2 means that is a binary number, 1, 0, which is equivalent to 2 in base 10, or 2 decimal. Likewise, 10, 10 um, is saying base 10, or decimal, so 10 decimal would be equivalent to 1, 0, 1, 0, base 2, or binary. Um, so when you do the conversion, what you'll often see, or especially in the assignments, uh, is you'll see, for example, something like that. So expected to put a 2 at the bottom to show this is now in binary. Um, as I said before, you can check your conversions with Windows Calculator or your calculator um, if you want. Um, so the one other type of number system I was going to introduce today, or the two other types, are what we call hexadecimal and octal. 
So hexadecimal, hex, the hexadecimal system has 16 possible digits for each location. So before I said, for example, with decimal, um, you go from 0 to 9, and that's it. You can have 19, but that's all, all you can get. So with hexadecimal, we can actually go up even higher, because there's 16 um, possibilities for each unit. And what we use is we use um, 0 through 9, and then A, B, C, D, E, F. And for example, F is equivalent to decimal 15. Uh, so a valid hexadecimal, now we can, you could have not one F, which you can think of it almost as representing one here and 15 here, except that's one unit, not one five. Um, so what this also means is that in, in hexadecimal, um, this place, so example 19 um, in decimal, is not the same thing as 19 in hex. Because in hex, uh, this place here isn't equal to 10. Here this is equal to 10. Um, here this is actually equal to 16. So this would be equivalent to 16 plus 9, this number. Um, whereas this number is obviously just 19 in decimal. So you have to be careful with hex that you don't make that mistake. Um, if you do programming or stuff like that, what you'll see hex being represented as is you'll often see it in this way, like zero times one nine, and that means hex. Um, so you'll see you know, zero times 2a or whatever, some big number. Um, and why we use hex is not just to be confusing. Is there's a real point to it, actually, and sort of a easy part to it. And that's that, for example, if you're, if you're writing a long binary number, you want to give someone some, I don't know why you want to give them a binary, but you want to. And it's long. It's a lot to write down, and you're going to make mistakes doing that. And this is only 24 bits. When you start thinking about computers, and they have 64-bit addressing now, so you're going to be talking about addresses 64 bits long. That's a lot of stuff to write down. You could convert it to decimal. Um, the bottom there shows the decimal equivalent of that. But if there's no real way to equate the two besides doing that conversion process or using a program to convert it, um, and that seems like a lot of work. We don't want to do that. So what we use is hex. And in hex, each digit of hex corresponds directly to some binary bits. Um, so I have that exact same 24-bit sequence as I've written before. And um, PowerPoint always seems to be freezing on me. But the point is that for, um, for each of those four bits, it's equivalent to a single hexadecimal digit. So each of those uh, four bits is equivalent to one digit. So you can convert back and forth really quickly. And there is a table. Just restart PowerPoint here. There is a table that shows you um, what that conversion is. And if you give me a second, I'll show it to you. And you can just use that table to directly convert back and forth. So this is the table I was talking about. Um, and this shows you in binary, in hex, and in another system I'll be talking about, octal. So what we have is, for example, um, binary 1011, which is decimal 11, is equivalent to B in hexadecimal. Um, so for example, 1011, we just write as B, which is representing four bits and 2, which is representing 4 bits here. F is representing 111. 101 is D, etc. Um, 
So we can write down that exact same 24-bit sequence in hexadecimal. And you can tell someone this number a lot easier over the phone or something. And it represents the exact same stuff, and you can convert it right back down to hexadecimal, uh, to binary. Really easy. All you have to do is look at, okay, A is equivalent to, you go to your table, uh, 1010. And then you'd write 1010. Um, so that way you don't have this more convoluted conversion process. Octal is the exact same thing, except instead of doing it into four bit uh, blocks, octal is doing it into three bit blocks. So octal just means you only have eight possibilities, zero through seven for each number position. Um, so it's a little bit longer than hex, but it's still a lot easier to write down. I'll be honest with you, in this class, we'll use octal on the first assignment and then never again. Um, so hex is quite useful, though. We will use that throughout the course. Um, and the final number system I'll be talking about is binary coded decimal, or BCD. So what binary coded decimal is, um, is just where we kind of cheat, and it's if you're lazy, then you don't even do the conversion at all. So what you do is that you have four bits, um, and everything will be broken down into four bits, but we just directly convert the number. So let's say I have 272 in decimal, and I want to convert it to BCD. In BCD, binary coded decimal, I just use this two and put it there. I use this seven, put it there. I use this two and put it there. Um, and literally, all you do is you convert each one of these to decimal. So two in binary, and you use four bits for it because you could have to go up to ten, up to nine, sorry. Um, seven is zero, one, one, one. 2 is 0, 0, 1, 0. So BCD is very inefficient because I'm basically wasting some of my data. Um, because, you know, if I have 999, what that gets broken down into is um, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1. And so when you write that as a binary number, Um, you're not using the upper possibilities for each of those four bits. Those four bits can represent 16 possible values. We're only using them for 10 possible values, which is binary code and decimal. The only reason we use this is it's faster to convert, basically. Um, some circuits you'll see using it, for example, because uh, they want the input to represent a binary number, and they want each of those four bits to map directly to a digit. So we'll probably see this in the labs, for example, driving displays sometimes, because they'll have four input lines, and whatever inputs you put there just get mapped to one digit of the display. But in terms of number systems you're likely to see, basically hex, binary, and decimal are the most useful to know, and you should be fairly confident converting. Um, So this goes through in more detail, and there's more examples. Basically, Chapter 7, View Up to the Boolean Boogie. The course notes also, as I mentioned before, go through quite a bit of this. Um, so that's most of the material I wanted to cover today. I'll just quickly, as promised, go over a bit of a review. Um, so what we had covered was analog versus digital. Digital systems only have false and true, zero and one, or on and off. Um, or binary systems, which are a subset of digital. Gates just take some number of inputs and turn it into some number of outputs. Usually, we'll talk about two inputs and a single output. Um, the gates themselves are defined by their truth table, which shows you for every possible input, what is the output. So the OR gate, 
Um, the output's one when either input's one. There's the AND gate, which the output is one only when both inputs are one. Uh, the NOT gate, which inverts the input. Um, the NAND gate, which is simply a AND gate with a NOT gate on the output. The NOR gate, the OR gate with a NOT gate on the output. Um, you can use NAND gates or NOR gates to create any of the other gates. So if you are only given NAND gates or only given NOR gates, you can make any of the other gates. Might take quite a few, but you can do it. Uh, and the reason we do that is because it makes stuff like programmable logic possible because it means you can just use one type of gate and solely by varying the interconnects generate everything else you want to do. Um, the final gate, or final two gates we talk about as basic gates are the exclusive OR or difference gate and the output is one only if the inputs differ um, and the exclusive NOR gate that the output is one if both inputs are the same. Or, and this is all of the possible gate types. Um, and again, references. So when we realize the gates, the only thing we're going to be really discussing in this class is using field effect transistors, FET transistors. And you can just think of it as a switch. Um, and the two types will either be like this or with the circle on it. And again, the circle means inverted. So when you are analyzing a circuit, um, you can just say, for example, if this is one, because there's no circle, it means the gate is, the switch is closed. Because there is a circle, one here means it's open. Um, so the output would be zero. And using, using such uh, switches, you can build up all of the basic gates. So there are a few examples, NAND gates, NOR gates, um, and XOR gates. All of them can be built with just those electronic switches. There is other logic families we use. Um, CMOS is what we'll basically be using. TTL we may use a few gates from. Um, for everything we do, you just don't care, to be honest. It's all the same for our purposes here. Um, where they start to matter is when you get into differences you require um, for really spe more specific applications. So if you are looking for a higher speed, you're running stuff off battery. This is a huge one, um, is power, obviously. So cell phones, everything like this. This is really driving a lot of new technologies. Get the power as low as possible because you don't want your phone to last five minutes and die. Um, like this board here, for example, it takes about two and a half amps of power to run. Um, and it's, you know, the equivalent type of processor might be in your remote control. Your remote control is probably smarter than that, though. Um, and, you know, the remote control battery is lasting half a year. Uh, for number systems, so the ones we will deal with are binary, decimal, and hex. Um, to convert them, you effectively just think about the value of each place within the number system. So in general, if it's base n, um, a specific place, you can just say we'll have value of n to the power of 0, n to the 1, n to the 2, n to the 3, etc. So for binary, it's base 2. Um, so this has a value of 1. This is a value of 2, 4, 8, 16, etc. For hexadecimal, it would be 16 to the power of 0, 16 to the power of 1, 16 to the power of 2. Um, so when, when we want to convert from binary to decimal, you can simply add up um, the multiplication of the value of this one times what it's um, what that location is worth. So 1 times 1 is 1, 1 times 2 is 2, etc. Um, and when you add those all up, it'll give you the decimal. To convert the other way around, um, my suggested procedure, and I, I do suggest going through it a few times just to familiarize yourself with it, is simply to start with the number, um, figure out how many locations you need, 
and work backwards, subtracting off the value of the location every time you put a one there. And you should eventually end up with the binary. Um, we'll make a notation of the type of number with either normally a 10 or a D for decimal or a 2 and a B for binary. And in that way, there's no ambiguity. If you see a number like 10, is it 2, is it base 10? Who knows? Um, and again, you can check your conversions with a calculator or whatever. If the assignment asks you to show your work, basically all I'm saying is show, um, you know, so show the addition that you've written out the value of each one, or show that you've gone through and figured out the value. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You can spill it in there. Um, yeah, for that one, for question four, um, actually, I'll get to that in a second. So the other not number systems will use hex and octal. Um, the power of these is they map directly two bits. So with octal, again, it's mapping three bits. Um, so these three bits map directly to from zero to seven. With hexadecimal, it's four bits. So four bits map directly from zero to F. Um, so as I said before, you can just write this down directly. There's no conversion needed. So in the assignment or other times when I say convert directly from binary to hex, there's nothing to show. There's no addition to show per se. You can say, you know, you can highlight those 12 bits and say this is equivalent to this digit, um, but you should be just doing it directly. You shouldn't be doing anything crazy. Again, octal, same thing, except you break it into three bits instead. Um, and finally, we'll run into binary coded decimal, BCD, a few times. And in this one, all we do is each um, placeholder here, each digit, you just convert to four binary bits, and you write that, convert to four binary bits. So there's no, with BCD, you're not converting between binary and decimal. You're just writing in binary what the decimal equivalent is. Um, again, you'll only really see this in probably one of the labs. And um, again, you can look through the textbook, which you can just download, and it's all linked from the website if you want. So that's everything for today. Any questions? No? All right. Thank you.